you know, winter is cold, but when we see th th the temperatures go down this low, um, is this colder than normal? And mm. because it is, can we say that, the, you know, this is then linked to the impacts of climate change? It's a great question. So absolutely, this is not normal. So even in northern BC, where it does usually get cold, we're talking temperatures uh, at, on Friday, 25 degrees lower than usual. Uh, even now, we're looking at temperatures across the province anywhere from 10 to 20 degrees below normal. Here on the south coast, we're starting to moderate a little bit, but still, uh, we're not usually in the negatives. We're still usually here in Vancouver at around 6 or 7 degrees across the island, very similar for many, uh, many places. So not normal. Uh, it's because, again, of this Arctic air that sort of moved down Usually, we have in the winter a very strong polar vortex. So this is a low pressure system that sits over the Arctic, swirls, traps all that Arctic air, prevents it from coming down here to us. And uh, there's sort of two pieces of this. The polar vortex is up high in the atmosphere, and we also have the polar jet stream, which circles closer to the Earth and locks that air in at surface level. But every once in a while, we get a disruption to that polar vortex. That air starts to leak out. That can affect the jet stream down here at the surface, and that mm -hmm. can sort of sink further down and bring us that Arctic air. So what's happening now is that jet stream has sunk further down and is sort of making that air sit over us. And so slowly, that jet stream is moving further east, bringing that air with it but it's taking a little bit of time. Uh, usually the polar vortex doesn't get disrupted uh, this often. It usually happens maybe every other year. Uh, we see sort of smaller outbursts of Arctic air, but not to this degree. And the, jet, the polar jet stream in an El Nino year, which is what we're in now, is usually further north, so we get even less of that Arctic air. Uh, but every once in a while, especially at the end of the season, El Nino can cause more of these polar vortex disruptions, but we're not at the end of the season, so very unusual there. And uh, in terms of climate change, there are sort of two competing sort of theories that come out of the models. And so right now, the weight of the evidence is towards the idea that in a warmer climate, uh, we see more of these Arctic outbreaks. The polar vortex gets disrupted more often, and we mm -hmm. see more of these outbreaks. Mm -hmm. There are some models that show uh, that this happens less often, but right now, by far, the weight of the evidence is on um, in a changed climate. We don't get this sort of consistent polar vortex that we're used to. Mm. Changing climate means a lot of things that we're not used to, including uh, uh, these sort of more common Arctic outbreaks. Absolutely. And is that something that will be revisited or studied, f you know, further down the road? Um, oh, yes, yeah. absolutely. We're, we're seeing uh, these models are being updated all the time. As we get more evidence, as we see more outbreaks like this, we have more things to add to the data set, and we can get a better idea of what exactly will happen.